Oh. Jenny Boyd, Nick Fink, Leo Howard, Eliza Moore, Luke Mitchell, and Courtney Bendeco. Bandico, god damn it. <laughs> I checked it on how to pronounce her name and everything, and then I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. I answered a word. Hello, hello. Wow. Hi, hello. guys. Hello, I'm glad, I'm glad you swore first. Just to kind of... Oh, yeah. What, are we, we're not in... Break that bear. We're not in, like, church country or anything. You gotta put a coin in a jar. <laughs> um, hi, guys. So, I'm gonna start way back at the beginning with Miss Danielle Rose Russell. A few months ago, I was going through my emails looking for something else, and I found the email with your audition in it. And Julie's response that just said, okay, Danielle is 100% the girl, next. <laughs> and I was really curious, it was stressful for us casting you because we knew in the back of our minds that there was a spinoff that was hanging in the balance of this, getting this right. How much about that did you know during the process? Well, at first nothing until I signed the contract. And then they were like, okay, we'll give you a year on the originals because it's ending, and then a possibility. And then I thought it was just like, bullshit, since we're cursing, by the way. <laughs> Courtesy of Karina. Um, I'm a grown. <laughs> um, but then like when I was on set, season five, everyone kept talking about it. And so I was like, oh, I guess this is sort of a real thing. But then I didn't hear anything until it was announced. On the, from the CW in May. Did year. you feel like any pressure? Like I'm, I feel like we had pressure behind the scenes, but we didn't want you to feel the pressure. I always feel the pressure. So we did always. a bad job. Always. <laughs> no, not for me. Or just in general of like, you know, the need to like prove yourself. Yeah. And do the thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about so so Elijah? I have a question for you. I feel like also in the sort of origin story. Uh, uh, camp. When we first met Wade, he had like a couple lines here and there. He was fun. Did you anticipate what he was going to grow into? The beautiful, nope. the beautiful butterfly he would become. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I remember uh, the first day we were filming was uh, foot. Uh, the first day I was filming was the football scene in season two. I think it was like two. Oh, He's three. like, put me in, coach. I can do it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And I didn't even know if I was a witch or a vampire or a werewolf. Originally, when I auditioned for season one, Wade was going to be in season one. He was going to be a vampire and be MG's roommate. But then once Chris Lee like really took off, they were like, oh, MG doesn't need a roommate. He's got, he's got uh, uh, Chris. I stole that position. It's, yeah, and then you yeah. did, yeah. But I, uh, I was like, yeah, I don't know what I'm supposed to be. And so I had asked like a PA. I was like, hey, I think I'm supposed to be a... a a vampire, but I don't have a daylight ring. And the script supervisor uh, ran over and she was like, no, you're not a vampire, you're a witch. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, good to know. And she said, yeah, we've got big plans for Wade, and then walked away. <laughs> and I was like, what? And then a couple episodes later, uh, uh, the character Sebastian, Thomas Doherty's character, um, says he needed my help. And then the next time he shows up, he's wiping blood off his mouth. And I was like, is that the Did big just plan? Did he eat Wade? <laughs> like, and he just, yeah, I straight up thought he just, and then I was standing in line at a doctor's office when I got the script for 210. And I was reading and I was like, oh, he's giving a speech. Okay, da da da, I've been misdiagnosed. I'm not a witch, I'm a fairy. And then the doctor was like, Elijah Moore? I was like, <laughs> and so yeah, I had no idea leading into it, but uh, I was uh, very happy with it. Was there a point in filming when you were like, okay, now I feel like part of the gang? Like, or were you always kind of like, I'm not sure if, how long I'm going to be around? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, constantly, yeah. I was always like, I'm, I'm going to be written off every episode. Like, but I thought at the end of the fairy episode, I was just going to like sprout my rings and fly away, and that was it. But no, I was, I was happy that they kept having me come back and be part of the, part of the squad. I love it. Um, Jenny, this show, I feel like, was the first show in the Vampire Diaries universe that started to sort of tackle issues, that sort of started to lean into things that teenagers were really going through. What was it like for you to play a character that was really struggling with her mental health and how has the sort of fan response been to that? Yeah, um, 
it was an honor, honestly, and the fan response has been nothing but positive. Um, so many people have said, you know, really meaningful things about it and about what Lizzie meant to them. So, um, yeah, I really just tried to do justice to her and to the scripts and, and sort of, yeah, showcase what I was being given to the best of my ability. Yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah. really sweet. I thought it was really interesting. And I, I imagine, I wasn't in the Legacies writer's room, but I imagine it was a real challenge to kind of find the balance between what's like real and honest and what's fun to see on a supernatural show on screen as far as representing her mental illness. I went back and watched a whole bunch of episodes in preparation for this, and it was really fun to sort of see the whole thing with Sebastian and, and her sort of believing she's losing it and wondering if it's real. Yeah, that was so much fun. Um, that whole storyline kind of started as we talked about maybe Lizzie having an imaginary friend and then I'd also been like, oh, and a relationship would be cool. So they sort of merged those two things together and I loved it. Um, but yeah, at one point I was like, what if like Pedro is just invisible and like no one else in the school knows him, but Lizzie's just been imagining him this entire time. So, but yeah, no, what they did with it was awesome. Um, Courtney, what was your experience like joining the show and sort of like also as a guest star and, and sort of coming to find what your role was going to be in the, the Josie and Finch of it all? Oh, wow. Um, first of all, I had no idea what Finch was or was going to become. Um, I thought she was going to be a human. I thought it was going to be her five episodes. And that's cool. I had to have I had to have a cool little arc. Um, so it was really exciting to have it blossom into this into this cool um, romance and and uh, kind of be the one that stuck for Josie. And because we had this joke, the end that, game. Oh yeah. The, and so we had this joke that it was um, kind of like the defense against the dark arts position in Harry Potter that it could, you know, they're around for one year and then they leave, which is really funny. Josie's um, love interest? Yeah. yeah oh, man. Like, nobody <laughs> sticks. Nobody sticks. Um, and then in terms of um, joining the fray, I was just, I was welcomed with open arms uh, with everybody. Everybody was so great, so gracious. What if someone was like, yeah, they all hated me. Okay. I, never, I never got invited to the cast dinner. <laughs> Which happens in other... How shows. does that feel, Nick? Not <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Kidding. Sorry, Nick's amazing. Not true. Specifically, I, I, had, I had asked for some questions on Twitter for some, for some help with this. And specifically, um, someone named Suzette on Twitter, Courtney, was wondering what your reaction was when you found out that Josie was leaving. Were you like, oh, God, am I, am I out too? <laughs> well, I knew, like, some stuff before everything like I so it wasn't knew, like you got a script and were like oh shit oh but did you, gone, but, you but, know was there ever any question on whether finch would stay yeah yeah um but that but just but just like what elijah said when you're recurring you're kind of always like is this my last one <laughs> like am i gonna go so you always you always kind of take uh the episodes as you get them and like oh well, that was great yeah um well maybe and then so at the end of every episode you're just saying goodbye to everybody <laughs> like it's the last time like elijah's always doing that was always doing that nick i feel like you got to i think you're like I think of you as such a nice guy, and I feel like you got to really like play against type on this show, unless I don't actually know you at all. Um, <laughs> but it's funny because I was talking to Brett about your character, and he was saying, yeah, you know, he was gonna be this like really fucking evil, just really hateable guy, and we really liked Nick, and we just kept making him more and more redeemable, and like somewhere in there there was a heart of gold. So I'm curious about the experience of coming in as a villain and then sort of getting to dig through the layers of why he's a villain, what he really wants, daddy issues, etc. Yeah. Um, I am a very nice guy, thank you. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, he was just so, uh, Clark was so ominous to begin with. I didn't know who he was. No one knew who he was. Maybe Brett did. I'm not sure if he even knew, but... Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's like, we'll tell you at some point. But, um... Yeah, and then he did, I was, yeah, I was very evil, but I, I still was like never, 
I mean, even with like Aria and stuff, it's like I was, it's always like working with the good guys even to do bad things, I guess. But, um, but yeah, by the end, I, and then I think, I feel like it just happened very organically just through, uh, I mean, Danielle and I working together that he just became like a, a nice guy all That's of a sudden. That's just Danielle's good influence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can warm the, the, even the worst of villains. Yeah, no. I'm happy she said it, Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the Clark and Hope stuff is always the best um, for Clark. But, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I just mean, you had other relationships. Clark didn't have much else to, to go to, so. Um, but, yeah, I, it was fun when he was evil, and then, yeah, he just, it was mainly the daddy issues thing, like you said. Yeah, he, like, I never felt super nasty or, like, I was just, like, trying to get my dad's approval by... Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still trying. Um, Luke, I'm sure, I got, so I'm sure you get this question all the time. I got a question from somebody named Catherine on Twitter who wants to know what the good things about working with your spouse are. But I want to know the bad things. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there, are there, I mean, of course there are pros. Are there any cons? Are you ever just like, I'm so tired of you? <laughs> I, I was I was thinking, are there any pros? Uh, uh, no. Those of you who don't know, Nick's wife Rebecca played Aurora. Yes, yes. Nick, uh, Luke's wife, Luke's wife Rebecca. Well, we've act, we've we've worked together a few times previously, but this is the first time in a supernatural realm. Um, so I don't know. It was just, for me, it was just mostly fun, you know, like. Uh, getting to move to Atlanta and, and be here for six months and, you know, kind of just check out the vibe and, you know, uh, to be welcomed by everyone so well. Um, so, you know, like doing the doing the drive and I don't know, I, it, it was all great. Um, the, I suppose the one downside would be, you know, if you work together all day, then you come home and you want to relax, but, you know, you've been working together all day and there's no one... I don't know. It's just you, you kind of take your work home with you sometimes. Um, I mean, I feel like it might. There are some days when it might be just super fun to pretend to murder my partner with a giant <laughs> sword. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, Leo, you got to be part of a long list of iconic characters in this franchise who start as a human, go on to develop superpowers, and ultimately. Find peace in the great beyond. <laughs> great peace. <laughs> Wonderful peace. Yeah. Um, what are the, for, speaking of kind of pros and cons, what are, because I imagine it's really cool. I almost swore, swore again. I'm doing better, guys. I imagine it's really cool to play somebody with these powers, but I also imagine that, like, then the job changes a little. There's more stunts stuff, there's CGI stuff, you know, what are the pros and cons of human versus, well, for me, I don't even know how to pronounce there wasn't of what your character was. a lot of, uh, you know, on the day, the power was quite lame, uh, shooting it, because the way it would work was we would shout, freeze, so I'd stop what I was doing, everyone would freeze, They'd, I would step You'd out, just, leave. <laughs> just walk off camera, I go, great, then I walk to my new spot, and then go. <laughs> and so on the day, it was quite... It that was, was quite, beautiful. Yeah, it was quite lame on the day, but uh, in the cut, it, you know, it was cool uh, getting to phase in and out, and there's a lot of creativity with, um, you know, what what happens with that. Just different things to do, and then as the show went on, uh, Ethan couldn't control the powers, and uh, yeah, ultimately led to his. There always demise. need to be consequences. There have to always be. consequences, unfortunately, in life. I'm learning that, um, but yeah, it was it was quite a bit of fun, and uh, like everyone else, when I started, I didn't have any idea of what uh, the character would become, and. Uh, yeah, phasing was kind of a new one for the show, so uh, I was proud to fill that role. So, yeah. Do you guys have questions for the team up here? Because I can keep talking all day. We have one question. Got some questions. <laughs> Where is the microphone? Oh, it's over there. She's right in here. Chuck it. I should have filled that space. That was a bad moderator <laughs> just then. Uh, hi. Hey. So 
I actually have a question for you, Karina. So I asked you this on Twitter. You guys I think go. you misunderstood. Yeah, you guys are just missing. <laughs> so I asked we you on Twitter, leave. and I think you misunderstood me. So Caleb's backstory, Chris Lee's backstory. Oh. Yeah. I want to know why we didn't get that one. Like, I know we kind of got a small sliver in, like, the... Mile of War memory. So I know you wasn't in the writing room, but do you know? Like, do you just know? I do know. I knew it. I knew you knew. Spill it. Get the tea. I think there was some conversation about potentially, and there's not any more, so don't get excited and don't write an article, but uh, there was some conversation about Chris doing a spinoff um, that there is no longer that conversation. But, yeah, so that's why. Because there's gonna be a whole show about it. <laughs> I'm definitely, there's some kind of like Warner Brothers Thunderbolt, lightning bolt that's gonna come down <laughs> like, and strike yeah, me, right strike now. me dead. Um, if, you, if, any, if any of you guys have more questions, oh, there's one over there. Um, yeah, oh, you got one? Okay, cool. Hi, this one's for Danielle. Um, so, <laughs> so in this show, you have a lot of daddy issues, um, but I Please feel Please don't like... ask if she actually has daddy issues. No, I'm not gonna ask. I'm not gonna ask I'll that. I'll tell you, but <laughs> no, no, no. Do you feel like we neglected your mommy issues in the show? I feel like she wasn't brought up enough. You know, like where was Haley? Not like your personal mommy. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you think Hope had mommy issues? Yeah. Really? Jesus. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's the grief, but like, she was always there for hope, I feel like. They left the relationship. I mean, yeah, we sort of did neglect Haley a little bit, but I don't know, I feel like hope found peace with her, that's why. That's how I justify it. Why? Why, Karina? No, I, think, I mean, I, I, I would say that that is true. I, uh, there was conversation toward the end of Legacies about bringing Phoebe uh, to come in and do an episode. And then I think it, scheduling didn't work out, but like I, I feel like I can say that if there was going to be another season, that that was definitely something that was like on deck. Um, but like Danielle said, I think that at the end of the originals, knowing that Haley found peace was important for Hope. Yeah, you didn't ask me, but I'll. There you go. I asked. <laughs> Um, there was somebody right down the center here, yes, in the white shirt with her hand up. Sorry, we got you running around. Over here. We, all, they, we would like to know about the dog. <laughs> I'm obsessed yes. with the dog. The if dog in like the, the eye dog. puppy. Also, I, I don't know if the people in the audience can see him, but I feel like I'm looking at my twin right here in the front row. <laughs> Yep, no, yeah, I'm looking at you, Chief, yeah. I had the same color hair for a while. We're both wearing plaid, chucks, jean, like, big photo op later. That's my twin. All right. Okay. Um, DNA test. You guys probably get this question a lot, but if you had to be a different character in any of the shows for the three shows, who would you be? <laughs> who was paid the most? <laughs> Nina Dobrev, serious finale. Yeah, me. I'd like to be her. Specifically, I'd like to be Nina Dobrev. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I, I don't know what to say for this one. I, maybe I'd just be Malivor. That sounds fun. You kind of were the word. Yeah. yeah you well, were. I want to be the full Malivor. I'm just thinking of just be being a piece of him. You were. Made you did play. the suit thing and everything. Mm -hmm. You can't answer that. I don't accept. Uh, I'll be you then, Danielle. I'll be Hope. Thanks. Thank you. Acceptable. <laughs> I'll be Clark. I like that. <laughs> I was always the most jealous of Chris Lee's drip. I'd want to be Caleb. I think he got the best costumes, and he got to breathe fire at the end. So, uh, and he's also just red. I want to take a stab at the necromancer. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to be, it would be fun to be maniacal and Shakespearean yeah. for episode after episode. 
Yeah. Luke, what about you? I, I feel like you get to play a god. Like what? You're like, no, I, I want to be the other guy. He gets to play a god. Look at him. Look at I'm, him. I'm, I'm pretty happy with playing a god, but I don't know. It'd be kind of fun to play Aurora and, and for Beck to have to play Ken. I don't know. Body swap. Yeah, yeah. We know what they're into. That old yeah. chestnut. <laughs> Did you guys ever run lines like that back at home? Learn them? <coughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh. The God and the Witch. Let's do it again. Come on. Oh man. What about you, Jenny? Did you say? I didn't. It's super lame, but I would choose Lizzie over and over again. Aww. I love playing that role. Aww. And if not, yeah, the Necromancer is a really good choice. <laughs> <laughs> I always said that I don't. I don't do it in front of the camera stuff. But I always said that if I had to do something. I would want to play somebody who like gets beheaded, so they had to make an exact replica of my head, and then I would mail it to my mom in a box. <laughs> What's so in the box? Oh my god! I know something's wrong. With I it. did not know where that story was you going. Don't, you don't. What's in the box? You don't become a writer for these shows by being like normal. <laughs> so your answer is also the necromancer. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've got a question. Who has a question down here? Okay. Hi. Um, Hi. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, this is my first con. Um, Mine too. If, if the um, legacy has a chance to be picked up by another le network, um, sorry. would you be interested? Absolutely. <laughs> Put us on HBO. Let's get real dark. <laughs> Yeah, like the, the gritty version. I'm here for the Wade spinoff. Yeah. 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 Called Coming Gary to Tick. HBO. <laughs> Perfect. Where would that be? Well, what, I feel like, what, uh, what I feel that, like what, Wade what would, would have a spinoff on like the no, Food Network NBC Skinamax. Sitcom. <laughs> NBC sitcom, multi-cam. Yeah. On oh yeah, like, like, oh, yeah. the multi-cam version of the the multi-cam version of the Salvatore School would be dope. Oh, so great. How do we not do that? I don't know. I think, for me, the spinoff would be the, the Limbros. The Arya, uh, yeah, Matt Davis, and the Necromancer. That Were you guys great. become roommates? Who? You, you I, I wasn't would, really a Limbro. You, Maybe uh, at one, like they, towards the end. They'd get you in there. Limbros. They'd get you in there. The Limbros were awesome. You'd be the ghost. Yeah, <laughs> invisible ghost. <laughs> Just voiceovering lines. <laughs> That's true. We should have Matt Davis on this panel. Mm. Hi. Hi, my question is if Jenny and Danielle enjoyed the Hizzy Sirebond storyline. Hizzy forever. <laughs> <laughs> did you enjoy it? Yeah, I loved yeah, it. I did too. Yeah, yeah, it was really fun. We worked together a lot that season, I feel like. We were yeah. together all the time. Yeah. yeah. I was so thrilled because I had begged to become a heretic for so long, and then I finally got to do it in the final season, so. Yeah. Was there stuff that you guys like talked to Brett about, or like hoped that he was ha would have up his sleeve if there if the show had gone further? I hadn't gotten that far. I normally Heretic is a pretty good one. You got there. Yeah, I know. I felt like I didn't really have anything else I could ask for after that one. Yeah, my my big thing was Tribrid Hope. I would have loved to have seen Hope a little bit older. I know that there was like maybe talk for time jump. Do you ever think about like what? what she would become like what's that girl's career in the future you know, she never went to class so i don't know how really how smart she is uh i don't know maybe painting it's just like kind of the only leg i have to stand on i like to think that lizzie moved to paris and became a supernatural detective oh, there's your that spin -off. Is a good oh. yeah, there's a spin off and yeah, I'm not pitching it or anything. <laughs> I, I can imagine like a cool like noir version of that spinoff. Let's talk after this. <laughs> Anybody else have questions? Got one down here in front. Okay, back there first, yeah. and then I might just hand you my microphone here. Hi, this question is for Jenny. If you were wanting Sebastian to come back to date your character in um, upcoming seasons. Or if there was a plan for that to happen? I wanted Sebastian to date my character. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, they kind of left it really ambiguous for a time, but then of course Thomas got Gossip Girl and he so had that things was to like, do on the oh, Upper East yeah. Side. He was always gonna go do other stuff, so but yeah, no, he was great to work with for sure. 
It was great. Okay, down in front, Elijah's twin. <laughs> Um, this one is for Danielle and the rest of the legacies for Danielle first. Um, what would the ending be for your character if it wasn't what it was? And then um, for the legacies, it's the same thing. Um, what would the ending for the show be if you wanted it to be different? Death. <laughs> Genuinely. I, I, I actually did, I think, talk to Brett like once. I was like, I kind of would like hope to die in this really beautiful, tragic way. Just give me all the drama. I just want to be dramatic all the time, okay? Um, and he was like, he literally laughed in my face. But yeah, death. In a nice way, like in a way of like, you know. Sweet, sweet release the, yeah. in a way. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Finally get to take a nap. <laughs> she just takes a nap and never wakes up and yeah. it's like it's how she wanted to go yeah I thought maybe it was like her only shot at peace genuinely so I think I already said mine I mean I was happy I felt like Lizzie's story was what it wanted to be and, and then she moves to Paris Parisian detective is not a bad way to end it um, yeah I, I mean Clark didn't I mean, his ending is so tragic if he stuck with Trudy. Um, <laughs> no, I feel like we never got closure. Yeah, we didn't get much closure there. But I did just have some crazy uh, vision of like Clark as a dad and like him and his kid playing in mud together. And it's like, yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> That's really sweet. <laughs> He's like wiping mud off his face. He's like, my boy. Yeah. My boy. My boy. <laughs> I had, uh, at the rap dinner, Matt Davis asked a few of us standing around where we wanted our characters to go. And I said, I could really see Wade eventually uh, becoming headmaster of the school. And Matt was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I'm like, what? Man? You asked what my dream job would be. You can retire, go, I don't know, become a Parisian detective or something. Unless I feel like Wade would, he'd be an alcoholic golf caddy. <laughs> No, not what Matt's gonna be, but oh, what his character would be. Right, right. Uh, you know, I was actually pretty happy with uh, Ethan's demise. I felt like um, he got to be semi-heroic in the whole Lizzie thing. Uh, yeah, so I was I was stoked with it, you know, and I got to send the video back. So yeah, I liked it. I also liked Finch's um, ending at the last episode. I mean, you can't really top Alpha Werewolf, especially if it's thrust on you. Um, if it went on, it would have been cool to see Finch be a professor at the school, um, training the next young Alpha. Season 25. Season 25. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Ken got what he deserved. He was a bit of a dick. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I guess, you know, if he didn't die, I don't know, it'd be cool to travel around the world and find other supernatural beings to best uh, and boost his ego. I don't know. All right. I love it. Can you guys, I don't, sorry. Usually when I do these things, there's like a timer in the corner telling me when I'm in trouble. So if you guys want to... 30 okay. seconds. Yeah, let me know. Um, cool, right here in the middle. Hello. Um, I'm just sort of wondering what it was like to carry the mantle of those two iconic shows that came before your guys's. Um, what sort of pressures did you guys feel, if any? It's just kind of a question for all of you. It was a lot. <laughs> I mean, for me personally, this was the, certainly the largest project I had ever been a part of. And to literally hop in day one and immediately have people in my DMs asking me what I thought about you know, the originals or um, whatever that device was, the, 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 the time, someone help me out, am I, am I totally lost here? Was the hourglass, like, my theories on that or oh. whatever, and I have no idea what... Hourglass? I, yeah, well, I can't remember. It was like the Josie's badness thing. I can't remember. But yeah, it shows, shows exactly how I fit into this universe. But yeah, it, I mean, it was I had never joined a fan base, in a pre-established fan base. 
for something before, and it was really cool being able to go to Twitter as well and be like, hey, what is this? And have 50 people uh, tell me very kindly and 150 people cuss at me. That was cool to you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys are a lot nicer than Twitter is. Yes. Um, got some questions here. Here, okay, here you go. Hi, um, this question is for Danielle. Um, so it's about your character, Hope's regular Hope. Did you have a preference about which one you enjoy playing more? I really liked No Humanity Hope for the time she served. Um, after a while, I, I kind of missed her, her love and her light a little bit. Uh, but it was a nice change of pace. I feel like I had played the moral good protagonist for so long, so it was a nice challenge for me. But then towards the end, I was like, oh, here she is. I miss her. I'm ready to have an emotion again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After, it's weirdly, I mean, I guess my take on No Humanity Hope is that she just didn't care. I didn't want to like play into the cheesy like villain, you know, thing. Not that that, everyone did great with that, by the way, who did it. Um, I just mean that like, I just wanted to play a version of like, I don't really care. And so it's weirdly easy to just be like, eh, you know, about everything. So when I got to actually laugh and cry and love again, it was, it was kind of nice. My question is for Danielle. Uh, if you could have chosen anyone else to pursue a relationship with besides Landon, who would it have been in the Ooh. show? You know, I was really on the Hope and Ethan train. What do you say? Oh, absolutely. It started to go there. It did. And then it did. Yeah. And then I kind of went there with MG. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no. line, right? <laughs> it did. Yeah. I feel like I kind of had a potential romance with everyone at some point, right? Yeah. 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 I don't know. Copy that. Yeah, if you listen to the shippers on make Twitter, a note. everyone was with everyone. I couldn't stop laughing the first time I saw Wope as a ship. Oh, why was it funny? Yeah, <laughs> why is that funny? I think we know. Thank you. Who's your favorite actor on the show? Who is that for? Is that for Karina or is that for all? Paul Wesley. He wasn't on it. He wasn't on it. Are we talking about? Oh, we're talking about legacies. Yeah. What do you, what do you, Especially, who is your favorite? Well, actually, on stage. Who's your favorite that's on stage right now? Danielle. Wait, yeah. I want you guys to know that I was on set the first day Danielle was on set and she was like a 17 year old little baby in her school uniform <laughs> I was I was in the car with Karina when I got accepted to college. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do remember that mm -hmm. And I also remember like one of your first scenes was this big emotional fight with Joe that I had poured all of my daddy issues into and was I was very nervous because I was like I've seen the, her audition and but she's really putting a lot on this like really young girl. She just brought it so hard, and I was like, we're getting our spinoff, day one. <laughs> that was honestly I think my favorite episode ever to film. I love that episode and those scenes. Thanks. I, I mean that. I'm not bullshitting. Thank you. Um, but I want your answers. You guys, you guys go battle boy all together. I said it. <laughs> Everyone's great. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I can't choose a favorite. Here? But ben, right. Down here. Uh, this one's for everybody. Um, what was the experience filming this show um, with your, like, other shows and movies you've been in? Like, what's the different experiences you guys had? Yeah. Who's up? Yeah. What, what other shows and movies, in my case? <laughs> This has been it, baby. Let's go. Well, this is certainly the longest I've ever played a character. And so that was cool. To Each new episode is another opportunity to make up another memory of hers. Um, work, with, work with more and more other people from the cast. Um, and then chill <laughs> for longer with, you know, the other cast members. Did it, have any of you guys ever done another show or project that had sort of a fandom like this that would show up like this? Yeah, absolutely not. I think, yeah, following on from Courtney's point, like 
not only the time that we were on the show, but then the two shows and all of the lore, like leading up to it and all of the history was really cool to have. It's just a continuation of such a long, rich story. I don't think there's any fandom quite like this, uh, but I was a part of the Disney World for many years and you were? <laughs> Guess we have some people that watched it. Sweet, thank you guys. No kidding. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this was a great experience. I mean, every job has its own um, quirks, and obviously you're in different locations for everything. That kind of flavors it. Um, different personalities, different dynamics on set. I mean, we were working all through COVID, so that really changed the work dynamic for uh, really the last couple years of the show. Um, but yeah, so they've all got their quirks, and this was a good one for sure. Right in the middle. Um, this is a question for the group, but did any of you guys have a scene that you really did like not like filming? Yeah. <laughs> Anything that involved being cold, probably. There was one day, I think in season one, Season one, episode five. Actually, I remember this. Yeah, it was it was a day. Um, She's got it like marked in her. No, I do. I remember. I remember being like, this might be. Yeah. Anyway, uh, no, I was on set and we were outside at the Salvatore house and it was summer here in Georgia and I there, there were like I don't know, they looked like fleas, but they were literally like stuck to my sweat on my body and they just kept jumping on me and I like could not get through the scene and I actually started crying when I was on set. That was my... I remember those things yeah. out here in Atlanta. They're like yeah. little like gnat They're kind of like they gnats. Jump, and yeah. they bite you. So. Jenny, are you going to pick the football stuff? Well, I was going to say <laughs> like anytime there was extreme weather yeah. or like super late nights, but uh, both of the football episodes were filmed on both of the hottest days of the year. Coincidentally, literally the hottest days of the year. Yeah. I wasn't in the first one, but the second one I was a part of, and it was gnarly. Yeah. My first day yeah. Heard was gnarly as well. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty extreme. Yeah. Um, My feet were like shriveled up from, it's really gross. You know when you sit in a pool a long time and you yep. get all pruning? My feet were like that after that day. It was horrible. Yeah. It was my only yeah. time in life. People so were there you go, fun fact. Thank you, Leo. There's and their really big feet too, so it's really gross. <laughs> There's this, this really unique experience of filming in extreme weather when you're, when, it's not like being in weather any other time because like you have to be outside, they have to wear clothes that are often not appropriate for whichever ver you know, heat or cold. And they have to just do this thing over and over again. It's very uncomfortable to do, which normally human beings don't want to do that. And they're like, oh, that was uncomfortable. I'm going to stop. But they don't get to stop. They just have to keep going. And it's really brutal to watch from the air-conditioned tent. <laughs> oh, that sounds terrible. We, we had another, it wasn't the football episode, but it was the last day of filming before COVID and the first day of shooting uh, when we got started after COVID was out in the games field. It was the, the Lady of the Lake episode uh, with the Green Knight. And I remember in March, it was very hot during the day and it was c very cold at night and the ground, it had just rained so all of our feet were getting soaked and we were like, oh, this is miserable. We don't want to be out here anymore. And then COVID shut us down and we were like, oh no. Uh, yeah, to put it lightly. <laughs> and then we get back to filming and what should be the scene that we need to finish, but we're back in that GD field, and it's, it's the ground is wet again because it had just rained, and it was so hot in the day, and it was so cold at night. Like, that was, that was the longest, technically the longest episode ever filmed, because it took, what, eight months to finish that one episode since we started it? Ugh. I have a fun one that um, Arya was... Malivore at the time, and he had to shove mud into my mouth. He put his hand on my face uh, in the back of the pickup truck. <laughs> and I've heard that. Are you talking song. about the show? <laughs> I love Aria. Aria's one of my favorite people. Um, and he had this tube in up his sleeve, and it was like in front of my face. And we did one take, and it wasn't high enough pressure, so they turned the pressure up, and it was chocolate pudding was the mud. And so I just remember they turned the pressure up and it went up both of my nostrils. 
and it was like just down my throat, up my nose. It was pretty horrific, but um, yeah, they just said give it your all for one take, and that was it. So that was a, that was a rough one. I didn't enjoy that at all. Yeah, at all. At all. Anybody else have any complaints they would like to file? <laughs> uh, I mean, now that you say that, yeah. I, mud, yeah. I mean, yeah, just my being born seen on the cliff, like, bluff with my dad in a golem suit and, yeah, being covered in, like, spa mud and it was with a wetsuit on. Like, I don't know. It was, that was so uncomfortable and bizarre. And, um, yeah, that was a rough one, and I did not. I made such a mess of a lot of things that day, but it wasn't my responsibility, right? Okay. What about the the big prosthetic when you were the muscle man with yeah. the one arm thing? That yeah, was that was. Day. Yeah, that was. I mean, I was like happy to do that because it was fun to be the monster and all those things. But holy cow, yeah, that was a a really tenuous process. That um, yeah, uh, was hopefully worth the result. I mean, I I, I enjoyed it, but yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. There you go. Hi, my question is for Jenny Boyd. Um, I love your and Kaylee's perpetual of the Saltzman twins, and I'm just wondering what was your favorite Saltzman twin scene? Oh, that is such a tough one. Oh my gosh. So many good ones to choose from. Um, oh, the one that's coming to mind right now, I loved... I mean, I loved shooting the the whole genie episode as a whole, um, and I loved like her and I doing the school tour together when the school was broke, and like that whole conversation that we have about like Lizzie realizing that this, the Salvatore school is not what she thought it was or remembers it being. Um, yeah, I think their dynamic that whole episode, but the whole way through the show. I mean, it's such a a beautiful relationship and. Um, I think really truthful to a lot of sisterhoods. Right here, hi. Hi, my name's Michaela, and I wanted to know why y'all collected Niklaus's ashes but not Elijah's. <laughs> yeah. That's a good question. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I, don't, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't think any of us can answer that question. One might be a bit Zero over our heads. Idea. But um, Zero. but it does sound rude. I'll say that. Yeah. No. I love it, when you take the reins. <laughs> Inexcusable. Agreed. You have a point. Valid. I, I don't know. It'll be, it'll be addressed in the... Maybe Daniel said he wouldn't come back. Spit off. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll ask. I'll find out for you. Um, hi, I have a question for Danielle. I just want to know what your favorite season to play Hope was. Season four. Oh. For sure. Mm -hmm. No humanity hope. Why? There's no humanity hope. Just wanted you to say it. <laughs> I also like season one. Season one was... How was the original? <laughs> the original was... Okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I mean this. I think the originals was my favorite, favorite time to play Hope as a whole. Um, I really liked Hope and Klaus's dynamic. I feel like that was just really strong. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not like making her say this, guys. No, she's not. <laughs> I mean that. Well, I mean, not it, so, no. <laughs> but for Legacies, I'd say season four, because no yeah. humanity. Um, okay, right here. Hi, this question is for all of you. If there was a fourth show, what would you name it? The Limbros. Yeah. I was going to say Lizzie Saltzman, Supernatural Detective. <laughs> Noir. <laughs> In cursive underneath. <laughs> Colon the musical. Yeah. Limbros for me, absolutely. Limbros, it was, it was my favorite part of uh, the later seasons. <laughs> Back when uh, um, uh, uh, Alyssa Chang was on the show, Olivia and I came up with what's the most unlikely spinoff and it would be of Wade and Alyssa Chang getting an apartment in New York together. Uh, and the title we came up with was Waiting on the World to Chang. Wow. I think they like that one. Coming to CBS this fall. Yeah. Wow. That's really, I'm not, uh, I was going to say the Crescents. If I was going to do a spinoff, I would do a werewolf show. Solid. I think werewolves don't get their due. <laughs> Teen Wolf was pretty big. I mean, yeah. you know. 
Like it's back again. They're doing a movie. It's hard to do werewolf so yeah. because of just so much. Well, we, we had problems. It was so much CGI, and we also had problems with like when we we use actual wolves. They're actually like so cute, and they don't want to growl at you. They don't want to be mean. They don't want to jump. They just want to like roll over and show their belly. So you can't really shoot with the real ones. Um, okay. Um, hi. hi, my name's Olivia. My question was, if you guys had to bring like a character from like the Vampire Diaries or the originals who wasn't already in it, Legacies, who would it be? Paul Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> also, Paul Wesley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ian Summerholder. You you got the. We're gonna answer, fight right? to the yeah, death yeah, later. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> What do you think? Uh, what do you think, Nick? I I wouldn't be able to pick just one, so it's really hard for me. Such a liar. Yeah. Wow. Wow. See that evasion? Just. Yeah, I got nothing, sir. <laughs> well, I gotta say, um, Taylor Kinney's character, Mason. Uncle Mason. Mason. Let me, I gotta go with the werewolf stuff. <laughs> Mason, yeah, Mason Love. When they killed Mason off, I was watching at home and I was like, what? Are they thinking? He was also, he was like dating Lady Gaga in real life at yeah, the time. Were, Lady Gaga were. would come to Covington and like hang out in the square. Wait, and then they killed him off. They let that go. <laughs> yeah. What? You yeah. could have gotten a what? cameo out Gotta of that. ask Trevino about it. <laughs> I'm shocked right now. I did not know this piece of information. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, okay. You guys in here? Right here? <laughs> Ms. Backmiddle. Hi. Hi. My question's for Jenny. I was wondering if you would like to stay a witch or if you liked being a heretic more. I really loved being a heretic. Um, yeah, that was something I asked for for a really long time. But I'm also glad that I kind of had to wait for it. And, you know, siphon witching was cool too. Got some down here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like two or three more questions. Okay. Um, this question's for Danielle, and I was wondering if you had the option to save Klaus or Haley, who would you choose? Boom. That's a good question. Wow. Got him going. In the spirit of neglecting Haley, <laughs> New class was at peace at the end. Like, like we yeah, saw him. By the end. I found him. By the yeah, end. Yeah. Did we? Was he really at peace? I mean, we technically really? speaking, right? Technically, technically he was in Vancouver. I, we like, just, just the the was word. Word. Technically, he was on Zoom. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. Uh, this question's for Jenny. How did you feel that you're? Mom was gone through some important things, like your dad being in the hospital, almost dying. <laughs> yeah, uh, good question. I think pretty let down, honestly. Um, we had talked about maybe having an episode that would explain why she wasn't around, um, to do with some sort of hex that made everyone fall asleep when she came to the school, or stuff like that, like really interesting, cool ideas, but we never really got the chance to do it. Um, it was maybe for a season five thing, um, but yeah, ultimately probably really confused and let down and yeah, mommy issues big time because of that. I think there were big plans for Candace and Caroline in season five and yeah. it's kind of a bummer. Yeah. Fan fiction will have to tell the story. Um, okay, hi. Hi, it's a question for everyone. What's your favorite episode on the show? Everyone looks at me. I don't remember uh, the name of the episode, but I really enjoyed uh, when Malivore occupied my body and I got to play evil, and I almost killed uh, MG in the hallways of the school. Just because it was fun. I really enjoy playing villains. Um, I don't get to do it a whole lot, and I, I enjoy it a lot. So that was it for me. Uh, mine's kind of a toss-up. It's hard not to pick my fairy episode. Uh, 
those wings were stellar, and that was a lot of fun. And uh, America Young, who directed that, was wonderful. Um, but I also really enjoyed the uh, uh, War Games episode, where we had the, the board of Artemis and Wade are kind of wargaming what would happen, because uh, Danielle was playing No Humanity Hope and Humanity Hope, and that was one of the few episodes where like most of the cast were all in the same scene. Those were big scenes. And those were big, long scenes, and it was exhausting, but especially for the statues, poor, poor Luke just having to stand there with no dialogue, all no day. actions, okay. all day. Uh, but it was fun in between scenes being with everyone and, and getting to hang out, which, which we rarely got to do, really. They actually made you stand there? Oh, that was, uh, that was my first episode on the show. Um, and it was with everyone. And, uh, yeah, that was my day one, first scene, stand there and just stare at people. And you were covered in a sheet. I really right? all like they do that in day. post. Yeah. I mean, all <laughs> day. All day. Who was in charge of this? Jeff Hunt. Jeff Hunt. <laughs> yes. Jeff Actually, Hunt. enough Jeff said. G Hunt, no. baby. <laughs> My man. Any of you guys have other yeah, I mean, favorites I, before we... One that comes to mind well, for me is like the Christmas episode. Sorry, yeah. I feel like the Christmas episode was a lot of fun for me. Just seeing the school like that, too. Fun scenes with Clark and Hope. Yeah, the Krampus. Um, yeah, lots of good memories from that one. I'd say I maybe have two. I really liked... Uh, the original's intervention with Hope, season four, uh, towards the end, and then maybe in season one when Landon turned into a phoenix, which was directed by Paul Wesley. I just thought it was a really different episode for our show. It was really dark. I was like, it was like Hope and the guys, and it was just a nice, I don't know, really dark, pretty. My favorite was uh, the Ginny episode. Um, I just thought all of that world building within one episode was so cool to explore. Um, yeah, it was really fun. I think the episode where they call it a chess board, but I call it a D&D &D board, this is it's a, a, a issue of hot debate, but I think that was my episode that I never filmed because I got cut from it because I, I got COVID. But it would have been my favorite. I'll tell you my favorite, and then we're gonna wrap it up. So you guys are all here to hear me talk. Um, I loved the like '80s video game episode that you guys did, and I when we were on the original, I was like, the originals was really a sad show. Like it was really dark, and like we were always having to like read the Art of War to come up with new storylines. I was like, they got to be in a video game. <laughs> It was great. That one was um, oh, that yeah. One, yeah. Oh, I, th was that the, the with woods? With the Minotaur? Did, was I in a scene with you in the woods? Was that that one, the 80s thing, the slasher one you're talking about, right? No, not the slasher. There were two I liked, I actually oh. liked the slasher one. I think yeah. I that one. That was on yeah, that was a cool well. episode. I enjoyed that, that was one cool. too. Yeah. yeah. You guys got to do so many wild things that I'm actually surprised you don't have a uh, you know, multicam sitcom episode of this show. Um, thank you guys so much. We gotta wrap it up. And your questions have been great. Thank, thank you, you guys. Well.